In this lesson, we're talking about keystone species here at our two dot points. All right, an organism's niche, competitors, predators, disease, whatever in an ecosystem all put pressure on it to survive, right? And these limitations mean that an organism will need to make compromises uh, to go from living in its ideal world to its, you know, real world, so its realized niche. Now, when other species populations increase and decrease in a community independently, right, they're doing it on their own, we actually decrease the pressure for any one organism to stay in its niche and do its role. Now, this is because we're allowing other organisms to be part of the complex food web and we're providing more opportunities for others to participate in the interactions occurring in the habitat. It means that the stability of the food web is not dependent on any one organism alone. Now, a classic example of this idea of complex interactions being available in a food web um, is Robert Payne's sea star experiment. This is Robert T. Payne, haha, <laughs> T. Payne. And he removed the purple sea star from a particular rock pool and he left an adjacent rock pool alone, right? Now, because the sea star was a predator of a certain type of muscle, as soon as the sea star were gone, the muscles were living the dream. And suddenly with no natural predator, their numbers increased significantly. Now, because the muscle population numbers increased so dramatically, they began to displace other organisms which shared their habitat, generally barnacles. Now, the muscles fed on limpets until their numbers plummeted, and overall, they decreased the number of unique species in the rock pool. So as soon as the sea star were returned, interestingly, the muscle numbers went back to normal, and all the other organisms started to return to the habitat. Now, the sea star is an example of a keystone species. Its presence allowed for the stable coexistence of a large number of other species because it limited that muscle to a narrow niche. A keystone species is a plant or an animal which plays a unique and critical role in the complex interactions within the functions of that ecosystem. Now, a keystone in architecture is a block which is placed into an arch. So without it, all the other bricks would collapse. Because of the interconnectedness of all of the organisms in the food web, if you remove the keystone species, it will have a domino effect and that impacts all the organisms populations. Now, keystone species aren't necessarily the most abundant or even the top level predators, but their presence prevents any one species from monopolizing the space or the resources within that, within that habitat. So the more complex a food web is in an ecosystem, the more alternative food sources exist. Uh, so changes in any one particular species makes much less of an impact. Now, wolves are an example of a keystone species. Trying to identify a keystone species is ridiculously difficult. And normally it's a situation of you don't know what you've got till it's gone. You can't often tell which species was the keystone species until it suffered, you know, a disease or unfavorable conditions and it dies off. And therefore it's removed from the food chain and suddenly you see this trophic collapse where all the other trophic levels disappear or change. So sea otters are actually an example of a keystone species as well. Not an Australian example, but still an example. Some examples uh, of Australian nature are great white sharks. Now, as a predator, it actually kept numbers of the lower trophic level predators in check. Um, but once you know we started to overfish it and hunt it and whatever, its food web experienced what's known as a trophic cascade, that cascade being that domino effect. It has no apex predators up here. So those uh, rays now suddenly increased in numbers. And what that did was decrease the number of lower trophic level organisms. Biozone has some really excellent examples as well. Number one is uh, the cassowary. Now, the cassowary is an obligate fruit eater. And when it passes feces, it passes the fruit seeds through as well. And then the feces actually fertilize the seeds. And more than 200 plant species rely on them to disperse their seeds. Um, the humphead wrasse is another strange looking fish that looks like you've caught it doing something really suspicious. It's an opportunistic predator, right? And it eats crown of thorn starfish. Now, the crown of thorn starfish actually eat coral. So these fish keep that in check so they don't eat all the coral in a community. Banksia are huge producers of nectar and they relied upon by honey eaters and small mammals like bats and possums and gliders and stuff. So at some time um, of the year, they're actually the sole source of nectar or food for these animals. 
Now, interestingly, in order to keep population numbers of vulnerable species intact, conservation efforts must consider where they put their time and energy. Now, if they just consider one particular organism and try and get its numbers up, it might actually, you know, accidentally, you know, cause a, a decline in someone else's numbers. So some other population's numbers. I mean, there's some really good um, articles about that out there. So here's our subject matter. Make sure you know what a keystone species is.